Okay, here's the equation that we're given. Negative two times the quantity x plus three squared plus eight. And here's all the information that they want us to find. So by finding the vertex and the intercepts, that's gonna give you enough information to where you can eventually uh, draw your graph. So that's why we gotta start and fill this information out first. Okay, so first thing we'll look at is the vertex. Now this particular equation is written in vertex form, which means that you can tell what the vertex is gonna be directly from the formula itself. So what you do is you take the opposite sign of what number you see inside there, that's a plus three, and so you're gonna get negative three that comes out, and then the value on the end here, you're gonna put exactly the same number, so we're gonna put eight there. The axis of symmetry always begins with x equals something, and it's gonna be x equals whatever number comes in front, uh, the first coordinate of your vertex, so in that case, it's gonna be x equals negative three. That's a fold line, so when we draw the graph, you'll have a, a vertical line going through where you can take one part of the graph and fold it over on top of itself, and, it, and that's gonna be our fold line there. We wanna find our intercepts. So let's first do x-intercept. X-intercept is where you make the y equal to zero, and we're gonna solve for x. So we get zero equals negative two x plus three squared plus eight. And then there's a couple different ways you could solve this. You could either multiply all of it out, distribute everything, add the like terms together, factor it, and then get the answer that way. But instead, an easier way of doing that would be to actually take the square root of both sides and use the square rooting method, and that's because I have something that's written as a square, quantity square there, so I can go ahead and do it that way. So I have, if I move this part over the equal sign, that's gonna become positive, and I get this. And so now I wanna isolate the square, which means I wanna divide both sides by two, and then I get this. X plus three squared is gonna equal four. So now what I wanna do is I wanna square root both sides of the equation. So I'm gonna square root this side, and then I'm gonna do the square of the other side. Remember that you gotta put plus or minus on that. Whenever you take the square root of both sides, you need to make sure you have a plus or a minus there on that one. You're gonna end up with x plus three equals plus or minus two. Now that can be broken up into two different equations, x plus three equals two, and also x plus three equals negative two. So I have two different ones that I can work out there. The first one, I'll get x is equal to negative one. This one, I'm gonna get x is equal to negative five. So my two intercepts are gonna be negative one and negative five. Those are my x-intercepts. So now I wanna find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where you make the x equal to zero. Now, a lot of times a common mistake would be, oh, if x is zero, automatically y is zero. That's not the case here. You gotta put zero in here and actually work it out. So if we put that in there, you get zero plus three squared, and then you get plus eight. So that gives us negative two times nine plus eight, or negative 18 plus eight would be negative 10. So negative 10 is going to be the y-intercept. So now that I have these, these points, I can plot all of them and that's gonna give us our graph. Okay, so I have negative three and eight. Uh, I start with first. So I have one more here, negative three, eight would be up here. So that would be, that's your vertex. Next, it goes through the x-intercept. It has negative one and it also goes through negative five. So you can see right away that we're kind of getting an upside down curve here, and that's what you should get for graphs like this that have a square uh, on it. So the next one is negative 10. So right here I have uh, negative 10 is gonna cross down here. So now you can see that all the points will form a curve. Now, if you do something like this and you get another point way out over here, that's gonna tell you that you did one of those wrong. So when you, when you get all this information correct, you should see it forming a curve, a parabola like that. So if you see it kind of, one point's kind of off, you want to go ahead and check that point out to make sure it's correct. So the graph itself is going to look something like this. We have an upside down parabola that's here. And again, the reason why it's opening down is because you got a negative there in front of the square term, and that's what causes it to go upside down. So here's all the information they wanted, and we got our graph complete.